G'day, just going to do a short video today on um, what to do when you have a bit of a hiccup, maybe a miss um, occurring or, or a full shutdown of your ECU on a Mergasquirt product. Um, so we're looking at data logs. So you've captured the event on a data log and you want to go back and try and figure out um, where everything's gone wrong. So I've got a data log here of my old R31 um, Turbo and that thing had some significant problems when I first set it up and it took a bit of a while to um, to uh, end up rectifying the problem. Uh, so here we got TPS goes to full, um, she's kicked back gear and the RPM comes up and then as the boosters come back up we've had RPM drop to zero. So there's your first flag of a sink loss, your RPM will pretty much ping, well it's pinged to 165 but usually it'll It'll ping down to zero. Um, nevertheless, you can see that spike there. Um, and we have a look here. Sync loss count in green goes from three to four. So I've had some events previously. Um, I used to have a couple of sync losses on start from time to time, um, but I've probably been driving it and trying to get the sync loss to happen to figure out what's going on. So RPM drops to zero. Sync loss count goes up. The next thing you want to look at is your sync uh, reason, and that's sitting on two. So it was two for the previous event. Um, if this is the first event, it'll, I think it drops from zero to whatever the sync loss reason. So our sync loss reason here is two, and that's a fairly common one. I think it's um, missing tooth at the wrong time or something like that. Uh, so that tells you that ECU is looking for the missing tooth. Um, say on a 36 minus one wheel, it's looking for that 36 tooth to be missing. Um, and it might get a missing tooth before that or it, it might miss the missing tooth and, and get it after it. Either way, it's at the wrong time and it just freaks out. It doesn't know what it's doing. Now, there's something else significant about this log um, and here's something you probably want to look at. Um, you might feel that your car goes a bit doughy after the event and the reason why it happened here is have a look at our fuel warm-up correction down the bottom line. See, that jumps up. Now that should only come up when you first start the car, so that's just some extra fuel um, and it's sitting in a table, but it will always decay like this over quite a short amount of time just to help the car just after it started because um, you tend to go lean when the engine's cold and it started. So I haven't changed, I haven't cycled the ignition in this case, but this has come back up. So that tells me the ECU has done a full reset. Um, it thinks that it has, um, the power has been cycled. Um, so we've had a pretty significant noise event in this case. Uh, and that, that was the issue that I was, I was battling with, um, with this car at the start. Uh, so a bit of background on it, it was an R31. I was using the, um, the original uh, distributor, but I changed the optical um, chopper wheel in it to a 36 minus one pattern. And, um, it was always given these problems. Uh, I ended up changing it to a crank wheel with a Hall effect sensor and that cleaned it right up. It was beautiful after that. Um, it was possible it had an earthing loop. It was after the fact um, I learned that some of those distributors have a, an earth actually in the distributor and that's one thing I never checked for. So that was possibly what was giving me the issues. But I also had a pretty crap wiring scheme when I first wired it up. I, I was a bit dodgy, I must admit and um, the earths, um, I did clean up the earths, redo all of those and it was much better after that but I still had these events from time to time um, which is a bit of a pain in the ass uh, and it's not, not real good. You don't want to keep that kind of thing happening when you put your foot down to sometimes have a sink loss event. It's just not worth it. So that's sink loss. Um, this is quite a broad topic. Um, you can go pretty deep into it. The first thing you want to sort of um, tell people when you have this kind of event is did this occur you feel want correction and tell them what type of sensor you have so um, whether it's a VR or uh, a Hall effect or um, in this case it was an optical sensor which is pretty similar to a Hall effect in operation anyway the VRs there's a few different things you can do with um, uh, inline resistance polarity uh, and adjusting the pots um, with a Hall effect or an optical, your, your pots are pretty much uh, pretty easy to set um, as per the manual and it should work. 
Um, but that's, yeah, you can go deep into this subject. You can do trigger logs. Um, there's a sync loss um, counter in Tuning Studio. So, yeah, sync error logger here. So, you can go around and it will actually capture when it gets the sync log, it'll capture what happened, which um, is another good thing to show people. It, doesn't, it won't tell you really what the problem is um, necessarily, but it'll give you a bit of an idea of what's going on anyway. Um, a lot of these things, these logs aren't going to tell you where to look, um, but they'll give you uh, an idea of where to start looking, and then you just sort of have to fix things up and, and see if it fixes the problem. But that's the place to start. So if you've got this sink loss going up, um, there's your smoking gun, and that's where to start looking. An easy fix um, might be you've put the wrong type of spark plugs in it. Uh, so if you do not use a resistor type plug, change to a resistor type plug, um, it will reduce the ignition noise significantly, um, and that's a fairly common cause of a sink loss, and it's really an easy fix, just changing plugs. After that, um, if you use solid core leads, which um, not many people are going to use a solid core lead, but they can cause a lot of noise uh, the same as well. So go to a, a spiral lead, uh, which is you know, the common cheap uh, aftermarket ones you'll get. Um, or if you're really worried about it, go to a uh, like a carbon lead, um, which uh, sh probably less spark energy, but um, a lot less noise as well. So that would rule it out. Um, and then you can go back to a spiral lead if that doesn't fix it. Um, but definitely the resistor plugs are the big one to look out for. Uh, leads less likely. Um, if you reused the earth of the factory ECU, then definitely go back and redo your power and your earth at least um, and see how that goes. But yeah, look on the forums. There's plenty of information out there. Uh, read through and, and see all the remedies and, and see what fits your case and, and try them out. So the next one we'll look at. Now, if you don't have a sink loss, um, it could be something else that's uh, self-induced. Uh, so this is a log from my Turbo Gemini. Uh, so this is a more recent uh, one when I was going through and uh, well, I'm still in the process of tuning. But um, my initial sort of first drives of the Gemini, uh, I'd gone through and activated a lot of stuff in the ECU when I was playing around with it. Um, the the R31 was an MS2, so I'd gone to an MS3 and I'd seen all the new options and I'd played around with them. And then I'd been driving the car and I forgot that I'd left them all on. Uh, so there's a lot of things that can cause a spark cut and uh, it's not going to necessarily be obvious what is causing it at the time. Um, but there is a way and it's not obvious uh, what that is until someone shows you. So that's what we're doing here. Um, these status um, status bits here uh, give you a lot of information um, as to what could be causing your spark cut. So I'll show you what the spark cut looks like. Um, here, TPS in green again um, and map and RPMs coming up. We've got one event here which is not necessarily obvious um, but definitely a few here where you've got a sawtooth pattern um, on your map and your RPM so that's just feel like jerking in the car um, with the foot flat and I've come off it and then I've gone on it again just to make it happen again for fun uh, <laughs> another interesting thing here that might not be obvious to some people when you think about it, it makes sense um, have a look at the AFR in yellow here so uh, lining up with these vents we'll bring the cursor over so you can see there's been a spark cut and you can see that it goes lean so she's sitting at 10.4 very rich and she goes up 17.1 um, so some people automatically think if you've got a spark cut you're not burning the fuel uh, that's going to go rich because you've got all that unburnt fuel in there um, that's not the case it's an oxygen sensor not a fuel sensor um, so it's reading the leftover oxygen and uh, it drives that if there's a lot of oxygen in there uh, that you haven't burned all that oxygen, so you haven't put enough fuel in to burn the oxygen. So on a miss, uh, like an ignition miss, um, or a spark cut, which would be the same thing, um, it's always going to go lean. So if you don't have anything showing your status bits, but you've got 
the same sort of thing showing with it going lean then it's probably a, a ignition miss um, that's not computer induced um, it'd be something like a spark gap um, or spark jumping across to, to something else that it shouldn't be um, it could be a dodgy coil um, especially if you've got like an RB25 or something like that um, a lot of modern coils uh, with a coil on plug uh, they fit into quite a small spot and the insulation breaks down o over time and they've only got a set life. Anyway, let's move on and talk about these status bits. So status 2 here is um, is our smoking gun in this case. So you just probably activate status 2 first and then the other ones and just look for something that lines up with these. So you can see here, this changes, status 2 down here, changes every time we've got an event and not in between, not before, not after. So that, that looks like a fairly good smoking gun. Um, now the way to read these and where to find the information is probably the, the trick that might not be uh, apparent um, if you don't know or if you're not shown. So we're sitting on 4, 0, 4. Um, when it comes to the event, we jump to 100. Um, so that's it. A jump of 96 um, in that bit. Now the information is held in our Tuner Studio uh, reference. So this is version 1.5 um, firmware on the MS3. Um, and there's a table here on page th beyond 325. So that tells you um, what each number coincides to on that data log. So if we look at status 2, it was sitting on 0 or 4. So if it's 0, none of these bits are activated. Um, if it's 1, then this is activated, nothing else. 2, this is activated, nothing else. 4, so on and so forth. Um, but then, uh, I guess the trick is they all add up now. People that have worked with um, programming and such, um, computers might, uh, this might, you know, tell you to suck eggs here. Um, you can probably uh, figure it out yourself from now. But these all add up, and for any number, there will only be um, one um, possible scenario of these being on or off. So if you've got um, 127, then it's all of these added up, and there's no other combination that will give you the number 127, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, so in this case, we've got um, 100, so we know the 4 was on. Um, and then the easiest way is just to start taking off the highest number you've got left. Um, so if we take off the 64, um, we know we've got an overboost. Um, so then we go down to the next number and we've got enough left over for the 32, so we take that as well. So in this case we've got uh, 64 plus 32 plus 4, um, which gives us our 100. So we know that we've got launch in, who cares, that's not really bothering us. We've got spark cut. And we've got overboost. Um, so there's your smoking gun. You've got a spark cut because of overboost. Now that's set up here in your boost control settings. Um, Overprotection is spark cut, and uh, the boost we've been set lower than that um, at the time. But that's where those. Um, that's where that's all held. And if you look through other status bits, there's a few other things here. Um, you could have your launch, all your launch ones on, um, and that could be giving you your spark cut um, at the wrong time. Say something's earthing out. Um, a few other there's your fuel cut. If you've got it set up for fuel cut, you'll be getting a fuel cut instead of a spark cut. Um, so that's four and five. I'm not really sure what that's about. I'll have to look into that. Um, and then you've got things like EGT shutdown, um, AFR shutdown. Um, I had that one because it sets a, uh, a differential. There's a table that sets a differential between what AFR you want and, and what AFR you're getting. Um, and I had a shutdown on a when I backed off at, at one point um, just because I had the wrong numbers in that table. And I had to go home, stop, back at the back of the day log, ah, oh, that's what's going on. Um, and so I wasted a bit of time going back out again. Um, so I guess another thing that um, might trip you up is 
even though there's a spark cut, you'll still get, uh, your, your timing won't change. Um, so if we were to plot the ignition timing here, it's still going to show, um, you know, 15 degrees, even though it's not giving any spark. Um, so that's not something that's good. That's not somewhere to look, I guess. Um, so yeah, look through your, look through your status bits, um, line up what's going on with the event and that will give you an idea as to uh, where to look in your software um, for this case. Um, there's a good one down here like limp mode so if you've got your check engine light stuff um, set um, it can go into limp mode if you've got any of this activated and that can cause you all kinds of problems. I've had that one too. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically go through, do what we said there, if, if none of this stuff comes up, if you've got nothing showing, you've got no sync loss, um, then you've probably got, just got a, um, a bit of a miss due to, due to spark plug up, your ignition not being strong enough for the, for the boost level or whatever you're running, or maybe it's too rich. Um, so yeah, look elsewhere. Um, but you know, that's a clue in itself, isn't it? So, um, that's all I've got today, just trying to give you a bit of an overview uh, of where to look. Um, in any of these scenarios and a bit of a starting point. Uh, the software stuff's easy to fix. Um, the sync loss, not so easy. You might need to change your whole ignition trigger system to get rid of it, um, if that's the case. But um, at least it gives you uh, a bit of an idea of where to look. So thanks for watching. Um, take it easy.